So let's jump back to, to uh, chapter 3, and let's look at problem number 3. There's a golden statue. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar is very prideful. So what does he do? What do prideful people do? Well, they make a 9-foot wide statue, 90 foot tall of gold, and say, worship it. That's me. 9 foot tall. A cubit, by the way, in Scripture is a foot and a half. Right? So six cubits and six cub- or 60 cubits high. 9 foot wide, 90 foot tall. And the people are instructed that when you hear the BSO play, the BSO is the Babylonian Symphony Orchestra, When you hear it play, you must bow down. Verse 4, chapter 3, the herald proclaims, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, when you hear the sound of the horn, this is the BSO, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music, fall down, worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Now David, or Daniel, is not mentioned here. He must have been out of town. I don't know where he is, but he's not mentioned here in this this chapter, but his three buddies are, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they have a problem. Now, what would you do, right? I mean, you're told this new thing, right? You could kind of go with the flow, right? God would understand. You're not really bowing down to this gold. I mean, you could, you could bow down like everybody else, but you could be praying, God, I know you're the true, one true God, Right? You could go with the flow. You don't want to make waves. Right? You don't want to bring too much attention to yourself. You know? Remember, you're a prisoner of war. You're, you're supposed to be following along, conforming to the pattern of this community, this empire. But what does Scripture teach you? Romans 12.2 tells you don't conform to the pattern of the world. Don't try to fit into this world. 1 Peter 1.16 tells you to be holy because I am holy. That means set apart yourself. Don't do that. The king finds out that these three boys will not conform. They will not bow down. He gives them one more chance. He says, if you don't worship, you will immediately be cast into the hot, fiery furnace. And then he even kind of uh, sticks it to them and says, and who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? See the pride in this man? Nobody's going to rescue you. Your God's not going to rescue you. But listen to their response. This is their response in verse 17. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Well, you know that ticked them off, right? But then they say in verse 18, in verse 18 they say, but if not, so in other words, if we die in this furnace, If we become martyrs, be it known to you, O king, that doesn't matter to us. We will not serve your gods, worship the golden image you have set up. Now the king's really mad. And he makes the fiery furnace seven times hotter than usual. It's so hot that the people holding the three boys that have tied them up, they die because it's so hot. And they throw him in the furnace. And what happens? You've heard this story before, right? What happens? The, the, the king's eyes are, are he's, he's going, what? What? Wait a minute. Didn't we throw three guys in there? And he says in verse 25, Behold, I see four men, unbound, untied, And they're dancing. I know the scripture says walking, but they're dancing in the midst of that fire, right? They're not hurt. But then he says, and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. And this will blow your mind, but I believe that fourth one, that's Jesus. Before he was even Jesus. The pre-incarnate Christ. They came out of that furnace. Yesterday, Jamie and I sat next door with our neighbors with a bonfire, right? We came home, our clothes reeked with smoke. These guys came out of that. They didn't smell like smoke at all. They didn't even have a hair on their head singed. I don't have that many left to hit singe, but you know. Amazing! But this is what happens when you make your problem his problem. Because for him, it's not a problem. That's right. 